One of these people is a member of European nobility. What is your name, please? My name is Adrian von Holthausen. My name is Adrian von Holthausen. My name is Adrian von Holthausen. Only one of these people is the real Adrian von Holthausen. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Winston Filters Cigarettes. And how are you, my favorite people? Fine. Fine. Oh, fine. You're, a, <laughs> you're a member of American nobility. Yeah, that's right. That's the best kind. All right, please open your envelope, if you will, and follow along as I read. I, Adrian Van Holthausen, was born in Amsterdam, Holland, the oldest child of the Baron and Baroness Van Holthausen. Since I have chosen singing for a career, I shortened my name for professional reasons to Adrian Holt. My first big break came in Australia, where I was picked to sing in My Fair Lady. Currently, I am singing at the New York World Fair in the Old West Texas Saloon. Signed, Adrian Von Holthausen. <laughs> These three persons all claim to be Adrian von Holthausen, singer at the Old West Texas Saloon out of the New York World's Fair. Let's start the questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number one, well, uh, congratulations, all of you, on having been in one of the most beautiful musicals in the world. Uh, number one, what is the Almanac da Gotha? I don't quite understand. The Almanac da Gotha, number one. I don't know. Ah. Uh, number two, uh, uh, who directed the Australian Company of My Fair Lady? Uh, the uh, Australian Company was directed by the same person that uh, did the, uh, the show here in America. Uh, okay. Number three, can you tell me what happened at uh, Dorn in Holland? Um, the, ke uh, the Kaiser, um, William, uh, he was exiled there in 1918. Thank you. Uh, Tom Poston. Thank you, uh, bud. <laughs> Thank you. Number three, uh, do you know what a, a log flume ride is? Have you ever heard of a log flume um, ride? It's at the um, World's Fair. I think it's some sort of a ride over with, in a, a wagon over water. Thank you. Number two, uh, what about you? Do you know what the Almanac de Gotha is? No, I couldn't tell you. Thank you. Number one, do you know what a bar sinist is or sinister? Bar sinister? Bar Sinister? No. Just by chance? Huh. Who is the uh, number Good one? Who is? Good bar to stay out of. <laughs> <laughs> Good bar to stay out of is right. Who, who, won, who runs the uh, Texas Pavilion, number one? Who runs it? Yes. Uh, what do you mean, who runs the show? Or, who or runs the... the whole pavilion, the whole Texas Pavilion? Who's in charge? Who's, who's in charge? Uh, George Schaefer. Oh, thank you. Peggy Cat. Uh, number two, uh, what is Dicker and Tice? Dicker and Tice. Yes. I couldn't tell you. Uh, Dicker and Tice and number all three, nice. that's what who is Charlie? What? I beg your pardon. I said Dicker and Tice and all things nice. That's what the girls <laughs> made up. <laughs> number three, who is Charlie Meeker? I don't know. Uh, number one, what do they sell on street corners in Wait Amsterdam? <laughs> the way we eat hot dogs, they sell something there that everybody eats. Do you know what that is? Which number? Number one. Number one. Uh, number one? Yeah. yeah. I don't think so, no. You don't, no, I don't think so. Oh, Orson Bean. I don't know who it is, but I found a million unanswered questions. What do they sell on the street corners in Holland? What is the bar Sinatra? Who is Charlie Dicker? I don't know. Tune in next week, friends. Find out the answers to these burning questions. Number, uh, uh, number two, uh, you are the son of the Baron and Baroness von, uh, uh, Holdheisen, all right. Uh, how, how are you folks? Are they still, uh, <laughs> still living in the castle over there? No, they are not. Are they still uh, with us? Uh, 
Yes, they did. But... <laughs> I don't know what good it'll do me to know. Number three, uh, uh, how many shows a day do you do at the Texas Pavilion? I do five shows a day. Number one, do you do five shows a day too? Yes, I do. And that's all the time we have. <laughs> But you can take your last and whatever else you have and mark your ballots, if you will. Please mark them at once, without change, and without consultation. As you vote now for the one you think is the real Adrian Holthausen. Vote as you do for number one, number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will, of course, receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked, panel? Very well, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number three. I figured that the, she probably would know what the Almanac de Gotha was because she's going to appear in it. And uh, I'm not sure that, uh, that uh, Kitty's uh, husband directed the show in Australia. I'm not sure. He certainly did on Broadway, but I, I voted for number three. Peggy Cat. Well, I voted for number three because number two didn't know what Dicker and Tyke was. It's a very famous restaurant in Amsterdam. And number one, what they sell on the street corner is like hot dogs with pickled herring. <laughs> with onions. It's delicious. <laughs> Orson, what is your choice? Oh, well, number one didn't know what a log fume ride is. And any uh, Dutchman knows that. I don't. But uh, uh, number two, uh, how are you? I voted for number three. Well, it's three for number three. You're going to make it unanimous, Kitty? I'm making it unanimous. Uh -huh. Number three knew most of the questions that I... I didn't ask her about the Almanac de Gotha, but I'm sure that she could have answered the question. And I voted for number three. Very well. The votes are all in and the minds are made up. And now let's see which of these three persons actually is the singer at the Old West Texas Saloon at the World's Fair. So will the real Adrian Holt please stand up? Ah! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Like I think it's interesting to note that the singer who is appearing at the World's Fair as Adrian Holt is actually Baron Adrian von Holthausen, whose title goes back to the 16th century, as a matter of fact. Kitty, you, uh, I mean, Peggy, you had something bothering you. What was it? Well, just about that restaurant, Dicker and Tice, is a very famous restaurant. Did you move away when you were little? I moved away when I was a child, yes. Oh, see, you never picked up the check there. How would you know? <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? Yes. I'm Dorothea Jaffe, and I work at, at the Americana Hotel as a receptionist. Oh. And number three, you who packed away all of the votes, what is your real name and what do you do? Uh, my name is Lavender Mutton, and I work as a product counselor for Skippy Peanut Butter. <laughs> And gentlemen, you did very well at fooling our panel. Believe me, that starts the evening off with a big, wonderful zero for them, but not a zero for you because there were four incorrect votes and four times $250 you can add as well as I, I'm sure. $1,000 coming your way from Winston Filler Cigarettes and a carton of Winston's on your way out. Thank you for joining us. We only hope that you had as much fun as you brought to us. Good night and God bless you. <laughs> Well, that's easy now. Let's all look at this brief. It's our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is John C. Trevor. My name is John C. Trevor. My name is John C. Trevor. And will you follow along with your copies of this story, please, panel? I, John C. Trevor, am a paleographer, a specialist in the study of ancient manuscripts. In 1947, I was studying in Jerusalem when a Bedouin shepherd discovered some extremely old documents in a clay jar in a deserted cave. They were brought to me. I thereby became one of the very first scholars to examine and evaluate a great archaeological find the ancient Hebrew manuscripts which came to be known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. Signed, John C. Trevor. <laughs> and these three gentlemen all claim to be, as you heard, Dr. John Trevor, paleographer. Let's start this cross-examination with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you. Uh, number three, I would like to ask you, if I may, the greatest source of uh, manuscript information on the ancient Greek culture that uh, is available to scholars today? 
I would say probably one of the greatest sources would be those which were found in Egypt, south of Cairo, papyrus documents. Uh, was there a library which was available, uh, number three, up to a certain period and was subsequently destroyed? Yes. What was the name of that library, if I may? It was a library in Alexandria. Thank you. Uh, number one, could you tell me uh, what the name of the people about whom the Dead Sea Scrolls were, uh, were histories? What was the name of the people? The Dead Sea Scrolls are, are uh, biblical writings. They record the history uh, that's in the Bible. What, were the, what was the name of the tribes or the peoples of, that, that were responsible for writing and transcribing the writing? The writing and transcribing the Bible? No, no, these, no, no. Scrolls, these, these scrolls. These very scrolls. This, this was a, a, a sect uh, who lived uh, in, in a community of their own in a uh, Peggy area Kelly. near. Oh. Uh, number two, where is the Book of Kells? The Book of Kells? Yes. That's in the uh, Mansfield Library. Thank you. Uh, number three, what is Linear B? Linear B. I believe it is a kind of script that is um, from um, a Crete, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, thank you. Uh, number one, uh, I read about some Italian monks that are doing something interesting with old manuscripts. Do you know what that is? I haven't heard of it. Number three, have you heard of what those Italian monks are doing? I'm afraid I have not heard oh. of it. Oh. Uh, number three, where do, you, where do you think the Book of Kells is? I'm really not sure. Thank you. Number... Orson B. Number two, who were the Essenes? The Essenes uh, were a Jewish sect who came out of uh, the period of about 100, uh, 100 to 200, 300 years before the fall of the temple. And uh, number three, uh, what... They settled at this place where the scrolls were found, of course. And they were connected with the scrolls, huh? They're the ones who wrote the scrolls. Good. All right. Uh, number uh, three, uh, who, who founded the great mixed baths of Caracalla? <laughs> the great mixed baths of Caracalla, a little-known fact of ancient... Yes, I don't know. Huh? I'm afraid I, I don't. Point. What substance is used to, to peel these uh, scrolls apart? I've read descriptions of... Is there a, is there a chemical used to, to uh, separate these? No, you just have to work it apart uh, the best you can with little tools and by steaming it and so on. Kitty Carlisle. Number two, there's a monastery nearby where these uh, scrolls were found. Can you tell me the name of it? Uh, there is no monastery near where the scrolls were found. Uh, that monastery has been out of existence for several hundred years. It's, uh, it was at Qumran. Thank you. Number three, where are the scrolls now? <clears throat> Some of the scrolls are in the uh, Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Others are in the Palestine Archaeological Museum in Jerusalem. And a few are in Amman, Transjordan. Uh, number three, do you know who Israel Katz is? I don't believe I do. Number two, do you know? I didn't hear the question. Israel Katz. Do you know who Israel Katz no, is? No, I do not. No. Uh, number one, when you found these scrolls, there was a great sort of, uh, uh, almost a, like a, a detective story about buying them. Do you know who finally bought them? And a great deal of money was paid. The uh, different scrolls were bought by different groups. They were bought by museums. Thank you. That's all we have time for, unfortunately, because this is, I guess, always will be a fascinating subject. If we had more time to go into it, we might find out a lot more about it. But you found out all you, all you may for now, simply on what you have discovered, mark your ballots. Mark them at once without change and no consultation permitted as you vote now for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots are marked, so Tom, no, I'm no, not marked I'm sorry, you, but you all had. Gee, uh, I'm really confused now. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. I liked uh, the answers that he gave until uh, came to uh, Peggy's questions, and then uh, there was a lot of hesitation there. But I voted for number three. Peggy, what is your well, choice? I voted for number one, because the Book of Kells is a very famous ancient manuscript, and it's at Trinity College, Dublin, and it's practically one of the big things it's known for. And also, the Italian monks are shooting new needles into the old manuscripts and giving them protein to keep them healthy. It's true. <laughs> Indeed. 
Well, they, they all look scholarly to me. Uh, I thought uh, I've read that there was some kind of a substance used to separate the things. I may be wrong. Number two knew about the Essenes, but number three wears glasses, and it seems to me that uh, <laughs> you read enough of that old stuff, you know, your eyes could go bad easy. <laughs> And Kitty, which one do you think is the real one? I voted for number two. Uh, number three had a tremendous amount of information, and I'm not quite sure that all of it was correct. I hope it's not you, number three. <laughs> I wouldn't want to fuss around with a scholar, but I still think it's number two. Well, you're playing it a lot safer than the first round. At least this is as widely excluded as it can get. There are two for number three, one for number two, one for number one. With that, let's find out which one of these gentlemen actually applies to the truth and is the real paleographer. Will the real Dr. John Trevor... Please, stand up. Ah, oh, you're right! <laughs> well done, well done, panel. That's good fooling, believe me. Yes, you know, uh, Do you know what an honor this must be? For this man was ex much younger than he is now in 1947, mm -hmm. and he's not old now. <laughs> oh, yeah. The good Lord has blessed me. Seventeen year old. Tremendous thrill. Oh, boy, I really great. must add. I, I assume you still are pursuing studies of these scrolls, I Yes, sir. It probably won't end for some time to come. I'm about to publish a book on them. Ah, wait, well, wait, well, wait that with great interest. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? I'm Alec Anderson. I represent Lockheed Aircraft Corporation in New York. Thank you, sir. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Whit Burnett, and I edit a magazine called Story. Well, we thank you, and hope you have a good time, because in checking the score, we find there were two incorrect votes, and twice $250 is $500 from Winston Cigarettes and a carton of Winston's on your way out. Gentlemen, we thank you, and we hope you enjoyed it, too. Good night, and God bless you. Put the panel back to work in just a moment. Meantime, here's something you'll enjoy. I'll tell you something that I shouldn't overlook. That Dr. Trevor is actually head of the Department of Religion at Baldwin Wallace College in Berea, Ohio, where he's continuing his work out there. And now, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Gordon Campbell. My name is Gordon Campbell. My name is Gordon Campbell. Follow along with me on this story, if you will, please, panel. I, Gordon Campbell, am an authority on comic strips. My collection contains examples of some 2,000 different strips, many of them no longer in existence, and some of them dating from before the turn of the century. It contains such rare items as Foxy Grandpa, Buster Brown, Mud and Jeff, Vintage Little Orphan Annie. And her grand old name was Maud. The Shenanigan Kid. And the first of all comic strips, The Yellow Kid. Mine is the largest private collection of comic strips in the world. Signed, Gordon Campbell. And so, panel, we take pleasure in introducing to you three gentlemen, all claiming to be the same one. Gordon Campbell, authority on comic strips with the biggest collection there is, I guess. We'll start this one with Orson Bean, if we may. Or <laughs> Indeed you may. Oh, I know. I know everything about the comic strips. Whoever you are, you're in bad trouble. Now, number three, uh, a question in two parts. Uh, who was Buster Brown's dog? Hi. Number one, uh, how come Little Orphan Annie has no eyeballs? That's the first part of the question. And second part on the same character, who were the Asp and Punjab? Uh, Harold Gray decided there should be no eyeballs and dogs. <laughs> who were the Asp and Punjab? Oh, they were characters in the cartoon. All right. yes. Number one, Mutton Jeff now. What is the name of the little boy to the Mutt family and his cat? <laughs> <laughs> this is all good stuff, friend. You know? All right. Number three, who appeared under the Mutton Jeff Sunday? Oh, I need more time. I'll gladly give you mine. Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number three, who wrote the Captain Jammer Kid? Who are they? Who wrote that? Who wrote them? Who, are they? who drew the strip? Well, there's been several artists on. Ah, thank you. 
Uh, number two, what is your oldest cartoon? The Yellow Kid. The Yellow Kid. When did that start? 1896. Number one, what caused you to uh, adopt this curious hobby? I'm a frustrated cartoonist. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Poston. Thank you. I, I'd like to ask a lot of questions. Number three, who is Ed Dodd? Well, he's a cartoonist. He does uh, uh, nature strip. Uh, what's Mark, his name? Mark Trail. Thank you. Uh, number one, does uh, Harold Gray draw another comic strip besides uh, Little Orphan Annie? Not that I know of, no. Uh, number three, is, do you know? Well, he does a small panel at the bottom of the page. Uh, who is uh, Leffingwell? Number three. Well, he is an, another artist, does Little Joe. That, they're not the same person, though, Leffingwell and Harold Gray? Peggy Cat. No. Number one, who was Winnie Winkle's office boy? Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, number three, at the bottom of Little Orphan Annie, there's another little script. Strip. What is the name of that strip at the bottom of the page of Little Orphan Annie? Uh, Ma, Ma Green. Uh, number uh, two, at the number at the bottom of the strip of Fritzy Rips, there's another little strip. Now, what is the name of <laughs> Number know. three, do you, who is Fritzy Rips' boyfriend? I don't know. What? What? Oh, <laughs> well, that's all the time we have. Boy, I wish we had the whole show. And just this one item, we could have used it, I think. I never realized we had such eager comic strip readers. But in any event, mark your ballots now, please, without cartooning. Just mark them. And mark them without consultation. Simply vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots quickly marked this time. Very well, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. He seemed to have the information we were thinking. How, how he failed to know Fritzy Ritz's boyfriend will never know. <laughs> Peggy Cat. I voted for number three because he knew about Ma Green, and I was impressed by that. I know about Ma Green, too. Yes. Orson. And Kitty Higgins, remember her? Yes, yes. With the red hair. And, uh... <laughs> Well, uh, number three had me completely, so I, I was torn between uh, one and three. Uh, uh, two d didn't know any of the well-known information about the Mutt and Jeff kids. Uh, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Augustus Mutt's son was Cicero, and his cat's name was Desdemona. Not many people know that. <laughs> uh, number three didn't know that uh, Fritzy Rich's boyfriend was Phil Fumble. Phil Fumble. But Fumble. still, I'm voting for him because he knew Leffingwell, obscure, bizarre, far-out things, Leffingwell from Little Joe and... No, so, once artist. again, Kitty, it falls your lot to, if you wish, make it unanimous. Are you going to? No! <laughs> I'm such an expert on comic strips. <laughs> She'll be right. Watch her. I'm voting for number one. Because number one has a kind of a look of a man who enjoys comic strips and is, 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 is interested in this kind of a hobby. He looks jolly and gay. And he did seem to know a great deal of you about somebody not having any eyeballs. <laughs> Very well, with three for number three, one for number one, let's go for the truth and find out which one of these gentlemen actually is the authority on comic strips. Will the real Gordon Campbell please stand up? direction this time. Number one, what is your real name, sir, and what do you My real name is Hal Rather. I'm a management consultant for Bury and Associates. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Number two, what is your real name, and what do you do? I sell garden supplies for the Almora Sales Company in Union, New Jersey. My real name is Dick Tracy. <laughs> There was one incorrect vote, and that's worth $250 from Winston's filter cigarettes. And, of course, a carton of Winston's on your way out. We do hope that you had as good a time as you brought to us, and we thank you for that. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> and now a word from Dentu Cream. Time we have for that, I'm sorry, but you made it fun, and I thank you for that. See you next week, and uh, don't you forget to join us at the same time next week in our good audience, and of course, I'll see you tomorrow afternoon in the daytime show. In the meantime, good night from Winston Cigarettes, and may I remind you once again to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotton production. 
This is Lucille Ball, inviting you to join us for a half hour of fun on the Lucy Ship, tonight on most of these stations. been brought to you tonight by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program recorded.